You know, when you're living in crazy situations, things that don't seem normal become normal. Like having crackheads as friends. This is the story of Lucy. I remember I was in the boarding house about three months. And this was after this crackhead by the name of Alice, who was knocking on my window or wall. Because see where my room was in the house, it was toward the front of the house. And it was something that they had converted from the porch to a room. And I remember the first night, bam, 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 bam. Will. Bam, 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 bam. Will. Apparently, the guy who was in the room before me used to entertain her. And I was like, Will don't live here anymore. Silence. Without missing a beat. What's your name? So I ignored her. Later on, I got to meet her. But Lucy, I met at the bus stop. Lucy was about 5'5", five, five, light complexion, really pretty. You know, she's a pretty girl. But she was a crackhead, which I did not... <clears throat> come to know until later. She was one of those functioning crackheads. Someone that could keep a job yet still be strung out on crack. And we were riding the bus and started talking to her. And it was like, felt a little chemistry. And, you know, after I come home, you know, I got her address because she didn't have a phone. A lot of like a lot of us didn't have phones, or uh, back then the thing was the, pay, the was a pager. The play was a pager. I didn't have a pager. She didn't have a pager. She gave me her address. So I get off home. I get off work from the labor pool, and I'm heading over there like thirst monster, because the girl's cute, right? So I get to her house, and the house looks crazy. The house looks dilapidated like it's like on its last legs and I'm like peering around and then I see this old man on the porch I mean he got to be 85 60 he's like what you want it's like I'm looking for Lucy she ain't here and I was like that was it that's all I need to know so I left and it was about another week before I saw her again at the bus stop and I was like hey how you doing and everything and let's you know hang out and you know, just to put my pitch in and and she was like, oh, sure, we could do this. Now, we're hanging out. She comes over to the boarding house, which I should have taken as very strange. She was comfortable coming to a boarding house. She didn't have any reservations. She didn't have any weird preoccupations about coming to a boarding house. She came right on up in there. So we hanging out like six weeks and we haven't been intimate. Cause you know, I was so shell shocked from my recent experience that I, I, I wasn't feeling overly confident. And that, that's just something that I wasn't accustomed to at that period in my life of pushing up on girls. Then I found out by accident that she used to turn tricks because she had told me one thing. Then I saw her on the corner and I saw her hop in the car and I was like, whoa, what, 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 what? And then later on, I saw her reappear back on that corner. And I was like, oh my gosh, she turning tricks. The girl I've been hanging out with for six weeks is turning tricks. And you gotta understand, Lucy had graduated from Dillard University. She was extremely articulate. And it, it was kind of crazy because I was living this strange, bizarro life where, you know, uh, there was a few people in the house who were on drugs. It, we were cool. And I had this weird collection of acquaintances, of people who were strung out on drugs or in the life or the thug life. Or there was this one tall dude, he was a drug dealer. And, you know, we never like sat down and had the conversation. I just see him because he was just like, oh, you live in the neighborhood. You know, you live in the neighborhood, little head nod and all this other stuff. So I, I had this weird assortment 
of acquaintances and people who knew me because I lived in the neighborhood. And also, I had a few people, because I, I shaved, that would be coming up like, Mr. Officer, Mr. Officer, because a lot of people thought I was a cop because I used to shave. It was the craziest thing, just a differential of just shaving versus not shaving would classify me as a cop. I didn't make any effort to see her because, you know, where she lived, the house was scary. And then, you know, she out there turning tricks, man. So the next time I saw her was at the bus stop and she's like, long time, stranger. Because, you know, I had been avoiding her. I mean, how does one have this conversation with a potential love interest like, like hey, I saw you out there turning tricks. What's up? I mean, it, it was what it was. I mean, you know, she was on that corner. And, you know, we rode in the bus and it was very silent because I wasn't chatty and she went to work, I went to work, I didn't say nothing. And another few weeks passed by and she's like, what's up? You know, you know, we were hanging, we were having a good time. And then I was just like, Lucy, you a hoe. And she's like, oh, you saw that. I don't do that all the time. She was trying to rationalize that she was a temporary or part-time hoe. She's like, I, I just needed some money. You know, I was between checks, but I don't do that too often. And this, this is the weird thing with crack and people on drugs. They say things that in their cracked phase mind that seem to make sense. But to someone who's sober, it's still crazy. Cause she's like, you know, and she just said that like, oh, I should be comfortable with you occasionally becoming a prostitute. And that's how I said it. I said, oh, I should be comfortable with you. And she said, well, ain't no big thing. I use condoms most times. And I was just in this weird spot because I met this person in the hood that I vibed with, but there was this one big elephant in the room that she was a prostitute. So I was like, look, you know, you cool and everything, but um, we can't be having sex since you a part-time prostitute. So in my mind, because, you know, I appreciated the companionship. I appreciated having somebody. So I had a friend that turned tricks because like, you know, when, when someone tells you it's like, it ain't really that bad or it's only temporary. She was doing this way more than she had let on. Cause I actually saw on the corner, once again, it was like about 1.30 and she was out there hopping in cars, hopping out cars. But I was cool cause she was just my friend that happened to turn tricks. So we have this weird, weird relationship where she comes see me I would go outside the house and just kind of wait until she came out because the old man, he was always on the porch. He was just like, Oh, you out here for Lucy. You sniffing after that ass. You ain't the first one. You ain't the second one. There's a lot of people be around here after Lucy. And he wasn't lying. I knew this to be true. And I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just like, we friends. We just hanging out, right? And I remember one day we went to the West End Mall and we, we went to the little Chinese restaurant. We had the, the, the fried chicken, momo sauce and rice. And it was like a perfect day. And, you know, we, we went home, we hang, hung out and I almost kissed her. Then I realized she a prostitute. And, you know, I just gave her a hug and did the dodge thing. And that later that night, I slept in bed, and I was just like, this is crazy. You never would have assorted or affiliated with these kind of people before, but now this is your norm. You know, you live in a hood. You know who's who. They know you. And one of Alice, Alice started coming around, and she's like, oh, you trick off with Lucy, but you won't trick off with me. And I was like, they ain't no tricking off with nobody. And she, cause Alice was a really dark skinned girl, really pretty, you know, when in a crackish kind of a way. And she was just like, I like that room. I was like, what do you mean you like that room? You know, Will let me used to stay up there, you know? And I'm like, you ain't staying with me, Alice. 
be gone. And she went around the corner and did her crackhead thing because Alice was out there hard. Alice was just like crazy with it. And then the drug dealer, he was like, yo, big boy, let me speak to you. And, you know, we ain't like had no conversations or nothing. He's like, you know, Lucy worked for me, right? And you've been occupying a lot of her time. Am I going to have to charge you? This pimp was trying to shake me down. I was like, no, no, Lucy and I, we don't have sex. He said, it ain't about the sex, player. It's about the time. And then Lucy came up and like, no, 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 no. He my friend, he my friend, he my friend. Then she and the pimp got to get into it over me. And I'm just sitting there like, this is some of the most inconvenient situation and the drug dealer was like, all right, all right, he get a pass, he get a pass, okay, 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 you like him and everything. And we, we ain't even smashing, we just hanging out. She just my hood friend. And I think about that now, because when I got out the hood, I went back looking for her. Yes, I had on my Captain save hole cape. I was like, maybe, you know, we can get her some help, get her in rehab, you know, I had all these hood dreams, right? Because typically, you can't help somebody that doesn't want help. She was happy doing what she was doing. She was content doing that stuff. And I remember I saw Alice. And I never saw Lucy. I never saw her again. I don't know where she is. But that's the story of what happens when you become homeless and you living in the hood. Crackheads can become your friends. True story. Crazy, crazy, crazy. For more stories like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell. And also go below and there's uh, courses if you want to avoid any hoodish experiences, if you want to make some money, there's some courses below for you. So with that, I'll check you guys out later.